Carol Willis. I'm the uh, founder and director of the Skyscraper Museum. And this is, as I said, the third of three investigations of the uh, relationship of the vertical cities of Hong Kong and New York, um, inspired by an exhibition that we have now at the Skyscraper Museum, for those of you who are coming for the first time today and maybe haven't been downtown to Battery Park City, Lower Manhattan, where the permanent home of the Skyscraper Museum turns its attention to various topics um, of history and present and future of the skyscraper. Um, this current show, the exhibition, uh, Vertical Cities, which explores the relationship of Hong Kong and New York, is the second in a series of three called Future City 2021. Uh, the first, you'll see in the slides in a moment, was uh, looked at New York. It's called New York Modern. It looked at New York in the early 20th century as the kind of birthplace of the idea of the skyscraper city of the future, the rationalized city of towers. Uh, the relationship between Hong Kong and New York in, in terms of the evolution of a city of global capital, of a port city born of its perfect harbor, turned into a port and a place of business and turned then into a, um, a global city of finance is one of the aspects of the relationship between these, these two cities that we looked at um, in, the, in the past two days. Uh, but also uh, yesterday we looked at the relationship of a close reading of the city's uh, streets, of the, of the built environment. So the two kinds of densities um, that, that we explored yesterday, and um, am, am I, is my PowerPoint on that? It is on that, okay, great. Um, uh, I, I'll, I'll interrupt myself um, uh, by showing you in, in slides in a moment, but the, the overview of um, today's talk will be to turn our attention more to, uh, to architects and practitioners uh, uh, urban designers, planners, um, reading the city in a way that is, I think, a different take than we have seen over the past two days, where we especially emphasize the people who plan infrastructure, who think about the economic development, um, city officials and, and planners who uh, take broad public policy initiatives, and urban planners who advise on, on how to make uh, public policy decisions on making better urban spaces. And we also asked a, a series of questions about density. Uh, so today's talk uh, is really turned more towards the ideas of architecture and urban design. Uh, and in a moment I will introduce my co-chair for, for um, this session is Brian McGrath from Parsons School of Design and the New School and one of the fellows of the India China Institute. And we're uh, partnered in this whole, in the series here at the New School with ICI. Uh, and very pleased to, to make this uh, international connection um, across, really, literally, to the other side of the world in terms of, of Hong Kong, um, 12 hours away. Our, our participants here are working on exactly um, the opposite schedule. So for them, it's 2.30 um, a.m. in the morning. Uh, but you know, trying to bring these um, two opposite uh, sides of the world cities uh, but yet so close and compatible urban cultures of New York and Hong Kong together in a kind of analysis that emphasizes the idea of vertical density. And that's especially what we're going to be looking at today. So in a moment, I'll, um, I'll introduce Brian McGrath. But just to show you very quickly, very, very quickly, um, what we looked at over the past two days. The idea of the global city, as Time Magazine um, sort of summarized it in the Asia edition uh, of January of this year, this triad of global financial capitals of New York, London, and Hong Kong, which they nicknamed Nylon Kong. And we looked at that, especially with um, Thomas Ho, the property director from the Metropolitan uh, Transit uh, rail company, the MTR, uh, and the new iconic towers, the multi-nodal airport express, uh, multi-level city that Lawrence Lau is going to be speaking about later today from a, a different perspective. We looked at those from the people, who, the perspective of the people who developed those properties, including uh, Julia Lau talking about Sun Hung Kai properties, the developer, one of the developers on these massive mega projects, um, and multi-level as you see there. Um, the second day, it was entitled, the first day was called Learning from Hong Kong. The second day uh, was called Debating Density. And there we tried to establish um, a, a, a picture of the physical city uh, where the, the obvious built environment density of Hong Kong that you see in these images, uh, an average density of uh, 70,000 people per square mile, 
uh, more, many neighborhoods being more dense than that, um, is um, uh, the, the densest city in the world in terms of the built environment. And we made the distinction that I won't make again here between horizontal density of congestion and, and cities that were characterized by that, like Mumbai or Cairo, uh, and these very similar intense vital urban environments of Manhattan and of Hong Kong uh, that we compared uh, in terms of their relationship to the market. And, this, and what we're looking at here is what I call market-driven density. Uh, whether it's in the commercial district of Central or any of the other multiple um, commercial districts, uh, central uh, or business districts of Hong Kong, or of the mid-levels, the most prestigious and expensive residential district um, of Hong Kong, right above Central, uh, climbing hillside. Uh, so that that kind of density is driven by market forces. But then there's a designed density as well, and that was illustrated um, in the talks over the two days, in the in the in the discussions of the extension by rail-based development into the new territories and the new towns like you see here with Chung Chung or San Juan O. Uh, and this density by design is something that's encouraged by public policy and land management. Uh, Nick Brook discussed this and the, and the, the parameters of that and the codes um, that encourage that, as did um, Secretary of Development uh, last evening, uh, Carrie Lam, who came from Hong Kong in order to talk about her commitment, government's um, commitment to uh, high density, compact city, um, as, it, as they often call it there, uh, as well as to sustainable approaches to uh, both residential and uh, commercial development. So just to show you uh, this distinction of a designed density where new housing projects uh, typically rise 50 uh, or 60 stories and some luxury commonly 70 or even 80 stories tall, but stand in relationship to um, the pure nature of the mountainsides of Hong Kong, um, as you see in this view of uh, the new town of San Juan O. Uh, but uh, also yesterday, we focused especially on the urban fabric and down at the street level. And uh, Peter Cooks and Smith discussed the, the markets and the streets, the connectivity of the streets, as did Christine Lowe from the Civic Exchange, who emphasized the, the practices of the use of the city, the places where people congregate, uh, and the and, uh, larger questions of, of sustainability. So um, this view at street level of a different kind of, of density than simply piling people into high rises was also our subject yesterday, um, as was a focus that turned to people as um, even more than um, to architecture. So um, framing those ideas in the past and looking now to today's topic of designing density, theory and practice, I just want to connect a couple of ideas that we're going to be looking at. Um, and this is uh, the, the our website banner of the three exhibitions at Future City 2021, 21, 21st century, looking at Hong Kong as it bridges into the 21st century in its intensive <coughs> moment of skyscraper development in the next show, which we'll look at Shanghai. Um, but the connection between future cities, visions of the city of the future, when we looked at New York as it, as it embraced the skyscraper, as it modernized, as new technologies of transportation began to change the city, there were these ideas of the city of the future. This is from 1908 from a magazine called Cos uh, then called Cosmopolitan. Uh, and uh, the, the clear relationship between one of the things we'll talk about today with Eric Howler and Jim Robinson, uh, uh, speaking of the multi-level city and the pedestrian bridges that connect uh, uh, Hong Kong's properties uh, at other levels uh, and began in Central, as you'll learn, that is now extended by government uh, policy uh, into a, a network that rises above the traffic flow of the street. That's one of the topics that we intend to explore. And it's a topic that was envisioned uh, in the 1920s, in this case, uh, for the Regional Plan of New York, and which you can see in a way realized in Hong Kong of the present. Uh, and those multi multiple levels of transit, um, Lawrence Lau is going to talk about to some extent, so I just show you them in a few of our own, own slides here. Um, and I think that's the last one before we remember to think about the relationship of New York City and Hong Kong um, as um, sister cities of, of vertical density. So let me introduce Brian McGrath, who um, will introduce our other speakers now for this afternoon. 
Um, Brian is a, a, a good friend of long standing. He is uh, now a, an associate professor of urban design at Parsons, the new school of design, and I've known him for many years in other places, including Columbia. Uh, he, Brian is an architect, and he is uh, the founder of Urban Interface, a firm that um, is a design studio that works at the intersection of new media, urban design, and ecology. He's the co-author of Cinemetrics, Architectural Drawing Today and Sensing, and Sensing the 21st Century City um, Close Up. Uh, I've known Brian for a, for a long time because we worked on a project um, together to ex expand a project that he had done called uh, On Mapping Manhattan. And we um, created for our, um, our web, the, for Brian's project, which we hosted on our website and is still there, a project called Manhattan Time Formations. Uh, which I recommend that you go see because it, might, it won um, many kudos and, and, and awards, uh, but it was created in, I think we posted it about 1998 or 1999 or so, and it still is as fresh today with all of the advances in new media, and that's um, because it's got um, a clear insight into the city that Brian had um, from his deep research as well as his talents as, a, as an architectural designer. Um, so, Brian, will you take over? 